Singapore has moved a step closer to a general election. The city-state is preparing for a poll that could be held during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Elections Department has detailed how polling will be conducted and a key measure will be more polling stations to reduce the number of voters at each location. And for more, we're joined by Associate Professor Eugene Tan from the School of Law at Singapore Management University. Thanks, Professor, for joining us. First up, I want to know generally, what are your thoughts on the new contingency measures? Glenda, I think the, the measures seek to be comprehensive. Um, and I think essentially what they try to do um, you know, is to build a public confidence uh, in the, for a safe conduct of the general election, right? So procedures on, on, on nomination day as well as on polling day, uh, provisions that are made for uh, the elderly. Um, you know, many of these measures are, are not what we are, we are familiar with. Um, but I think the, the early mention of uh, these measures, you know, seek to build public confidence. Uh, you know, we, we are... Uh, less than seven months, you know, from the end of this uh, parliament's term. Uh, so I, I think the elections are, are coming very soon. Uh, and so there is a need to get the public aware of uh, the contingency measures that are put in place uh, for a safe conduct of the general elections. And as far as campaigning is concerned, it will depend on guidelines from the health ministry at the time uh, the situation is fairly fluid, but that does present certain challenges uh, for parties wanting to get their message out. It does. Um, and, and I think in the end, we must remember that uh, you know, public health concerns are, are not um, contrary you know, to the need for Singaporeans to go to the polls, you know, to put uh, you know, a, a new government uh, in, in office. Um, and, and so I think you know, parties will have to be nimble. They will have to adjust you know, to the public health uh, concerns as well as the measures you know, to safeguard um, public health. Um, so that will mean that this will be a qualitatively uh, different uh, general election, right? I, I think, you know, we can certainly think about masks and, and, and gloves, you know, being a feature of, of, of these elections. We, will, we can think of, you know, contactless uh, campaigning, you know, being another uh, attribute of, of, of the coming uh, general election. Um, but I think it, what it tries to do, you know, is, is to ensure that, uh, you know, Singaporeans can exercise a democratic choice, uh, you know, in a, a safe environment. And we should look at, uh, you know, the, the fact that this upcoming general election will feature online campaigning very prominently. Uh, and, and I think, you know, in the past, online campaigning was perhaps supplementary. Uh, but I think for this coming general election, online campaigning, you know, will be complementary, you know, if not the dominant mode of, of, of engagement uh, with, with voters. So I think it will call for parties to be creative. Uh, you know, they, they will have to adjust to the conditions just as voters have to adjust. Uh, and I think this is how we can marry, you know, the concerns of public health, you know, with Singaporeans, you know, going to, to, to the ballot boxes, uh, you know, to exercise their democratic choice. Well, you mentioned that online campaigning being quite central this time. So there's also increased transparency and accountability that will come into play for the use of paid internet election advertising. Help us understand, what are some of the issues, uh, what are kind of issues are the amendments designed to prevent? Well, so the amendments seek to provide for more disclosure uh, of uh, paid uh, internet election advertising. You know, so the idea that now, you know, as, as more uh, parties and candidates are going online uh, and with the fact that you will have, you know, um, paid advertisements, whether those are website banners or paid, uh, editorials, you know, there is a need for, for voters to be informed, you know, who is funding um, a particular advertisement, uh, you know, because the funder could have certain uh, objectives, you know, that he or she uh, may want to to obtain, you know, from, from funding uh, a particular party or a particular candidate. Um, so the, the amended uh, subsidiary legislation, I think, is a step in the right direction because it, it seeks to provide more transparency and accountability. And, and what it all adds up to, you know, is to, is to provide for more greater uh, integrity in the electoral process. You know, so I, I think it's a step in, in the right direction. Uh, I think disclosure, uh, you know, to, to, to the to the maximum is always uh, in the best interest of, of, of voters. 
Well, thank you so much for speaking to us this evening. Associate Professor Eugene Tan from the School of Law at Singapore Management University.